I'm excited to introduce our newest product, Engineering On Demand. This is a free Revit plugin, which allows architects to coordinate HVAC space requirements instantaneously. Before I get into all the details, I'm gonna do a quick example. So this is a small school. Uh, I don't have any space allocated for mechanical equipment. I don't have any uh, shaft space or mechanical room space, or and I don't know how big the air handling unit is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my add-ins tab. I'm going to open up engineering on demand, and I'm just going to hit design HVAC system and import placement blocks. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a new mechanical model, design an HVAC system. Uh, so run load calculations, do ventilation calculations, select equipment, and it's going to import the most important equipment to the architect back into the architectural model so that the architect can coordinate space requirements shafts, air handling units, and mechanical rooms. Um, so, okay. So we'll see here that we've got a one air handling unit that gets dropped in and a shaft. Now these don't get dropped in anywhere specific. They're just kind of general placement blocks that, that the architect can then use to make work with their design. So, We've got a shaft right here uh, that might may or may not be a good place for the shaft. Um, let's move it here. Let's move it into this corner here. And then let's uh, put a uh, wall around it. Then let's look at this air handling unit. Uh, let's go to the roof. That's maybe, maybe it might look better like this. But so now the architect can decide quickly do I need screening? Um, you know, they get an understanding of how big this this unit is going to be on the on the roof, and they get a, an idea of how much floor space they need to a, a, accommodate for uh, HVAC shafts. So let's say this is a existing building, and our plan was to replace all the windows, but that got VE'd out. So let's go to and let's change our window settings. And we'll go into how we do all this in, in a minute. But for now, let's just say, hey, instead of our code minimum windows, we're gonna do the original single pane. Then that's open up engineering on demand again, and that's design the HVAC system and import placement blocks. So what this is gonna do, it's going to create a brand new model, run all the same steps, but this time it's got the single pane windows uh, that you've selected. So we're going to see what that does to our design. Okay, let's look here. Okay, see our shaft got a lot bigger. So now we know automatically we have to account for more space for our shaft. We can also see our air handling unit got bigger. So we know that stuff kind of instantaneously. And I want to get to the point where I can give cost feedback on this. So you could quickly be able to tell, hey, if we VE these windows, uh, we're going to have to spend an extra $50,000 on air handling unit equipment and uh, HVAC equipment. Uh, so it'll just give you much better feedback. But for now, I want to get this into architect's hands. So uh, because it's important for the architect to put some additional information in to get to get all this. So this is a very powerful tool to get you some in information very quickly and any time that you need it. You don't need to play phone tag with the engineer. You don't need to wait for them to get your model and do their calculations. Just one button and you get some some good information back. Um, now, in order to get this information, you have to put a little bit more information in the model uh, than you're probably used to. So let's go over that now. Um, so let's go and let's open up the plugin. And we're going to expand these tabs. First is the project data. Now, a lot of this you're going to set by default anyway. So the location and orientation, the location and the project orientation to True North. Most architects I see are setting that just based on good practice. They need to do it anyway. 
Uh, set ground plane in analyze tab energy settings. So this is something that's typically not set, but you can go in here, go to energy settings, set your ground plane. So in this case, the ground plane is the first floor. Review the Ripple room engineering data schedule and correct the engineering room types and HVAC occupancy load. So when you open up the plugin, it's going to import two schedules into your project. It's going to imp imp import a room schedule and a key schedule. Now the key schedule has all of these different space types and these default occupancy loads. So what an engineer has to do to run loads and ventilation calculations is they have to take all of your rooms and assign a room type. Now these room types come from ASHRAE and these occupancy loads come from ASHRAE. So the when these schedules get imported, uh, engineering on demand is going to guess at what the space type is based on your name in the area. So it's going to give you a pretty good head start as to what typically engineers would think think that these spaces are. Uh, but you can correct them if it gets something wrong, if it can't understand, if it doesn't understand your naming. And then the other big thing is the thing that varies a lot is the HVAC occupancy count. So I see this being a problem in a, in a lot of projects. So I was on a project that had a gym that looked like a small middle school gym, maybe 40 kids playing. The, that's what the engineer assumed. But it turns out they have graduation in that gym every year and it's 500 kids or it's 500 people. And so now the school district is having to bring in temporary HVAC equipment every time they do uh, graduation. And that's a huge hassle. It made the whole design team look bad. The architect totally understood this. They planned for storage for chairs. They planned for storage for, for stages. They totally understood the programming of the space, but that information didn't get communicated to the mechanical engineer. Now, the mechanical engineer should have been more involved in the project and they should have picked that up. They didn't. It doesn't really matter. The school district thought the whole design team, you know, did a bad job. Now, so, the architect, in my opinion, is, is the better person to be setting all of these values. Um, and then there's another space. It's just any notes that you want to add to the to, to the engineer. So if you want to tell them, you know, once per year, uh, graduation, 500 people. You can talk to the, you, you could just make that note, the engineer is gonna get that note and you guys can discuss maybe temporary HVAC equipment is the best solution, but at least you get to have the conversation with the engineer and the, and the school district. Okay, so once that all is tabulated, this is gonna pull up the sum of all HVAC occupancy loads in each, in all of the rooms. So it's just gonna sum all of this up. Um, this may or may not, this is probably not the amount of people that are going to be in the building. You know, you'll, the kids will be in the classroom or they'll be in the gym, but they're not going to be in both. So you need to enter the peak occupancy load that's expected for the entire building. So, um, by default, it's going to assume 60%, but, you know, maybe the architect, again, knows better how many people to expect in the building. So let's put 200 in there um, and just check that off. Uh, these don't have to be checked off. It's just allows you to keep, keep track of uh, what's going on. Okay, let's look at constructions. So this is something that I typically don't see architects setting correctly, and it's because they've never really had a reason to. So the first and the easiest thing to do is just hit set code minimum constructions and that's going to go to everything and it's going to look up the climate zone that the project's in and it's going to uh find the code minimum construction and, and assign that so you can go to um the Analyze tab, Energy Settings, Other Options, Schematic Types to, to change these things and look at these things. So let's go to Analyze, Energy Settings, Schematic Types. So again, we've got all code, code minimums set here, but you know, there's 
different kinds of code minimums. There's metal frames, there's wood frames, there's mass walls. So maybe you want to change that. Um, maybe you've got a masonry wall, so you want to make this a, a mass wall. So you can do that. You can set whatever your actual building is going to be, and that'll give you a more accurate shaft sizes, more accurate air handling unit sizes, um, everything like that. Now, the problem with out-of-the-box Revit is that this, it does not give you a very detailed information here, and it doesn't allow you to add override constructions. So that is what um, add review override constructions does. So when you open this up, it's going to look at all your override constructions and break it out. And so you can see all of the materials that the constructions are assuming. So that you can see that uh, your metal framed wall is, you know, an air film, R13 plus seven and a half continuous insulation, chips and board, and your mass walls are a little bit different. Uh, they've got CMU, 8-inch CMU, um, and then it allows you to create your own constructions and openings um, to so you can override, you know, your project-specific information. The other way to assign um, thermal properties is to go and use the actual element. So that would be, if I went through, I went to energy settings, and I unchecked all of these, it would not override to this. It would use the information on the actual element. So when you go to these, to like a wall, and you go to edit type, and you look at all of the materials that the wall is constructed out of, um, you know, when you go and click, these have thermal properties associated with them. Now, I have never seen these be, most of the time they're not even set, um, and sometimes, and even if they are set, they're probably not set correctly. And again, architects have never had a real reason to, but I'm hoping to give you a reason to, so you can get instantaneous uh, engineering and feedback on your engineering sizes if you get this information in. Now, in my experience, architects might have thousands of materials in their library, so you do not want to go through and and get and set the thermal properties for every single material in your library, it would also be a huge pain to go through to every single construction you have in your project and set the, um, set the constructions that way. So what we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna use the last feature on uh, engineering on demand, and we're gonna review actual element constructions. So we're going to hit find elements. It's going to search the whole model and see what's being used uh, as uh, a bounding element. And um, it's going to dis display it here. So here are all the materials. So if you go to your material library and fix these, then all of your constructions are going to be correct. So once you're done here, once you have your shafts placed and your air handling units placed, let's go into the, the project folder. So this is the um, project folder that the, uh, you know, this architectural project is. What's going to happen when you run this is it's going to create an engineering folder, and then it's a mechanical folder, and it's going to create a new folder for every time you run the model. So that's where the mechanical model is going to go. So here's the mechanical model for this architectural project. Now, you can't open it at the same time because they're linked. So let's uh, close this. And then let's open up this mechanical model. So you've got they've got a load calculation report, they've got equipment selected, they've got diffusers laid out, um, they've got schedules uh, all ready to go. Um, your engineer is really going to be starting on second base when you uh, send this model over to them. Now. Ripple has been making HVAC software for mechanical engineers for about two years now. So we have thousands of users all over the country. Uh, so they'll be very familiar with this process and the assumptions, and they'll be able to give you quick turnaround and uh, good customer service. Now, if your engineer is not using Ripple HVAC toolkit, we can connect you with engineers that are. So we are in early access right now. 
uh, for engineering on demand. If you'd like to use it, uh, please reach out to me. Thank you.